Hi everyone and welcome to another interview here in the Anywhere interview series. My name's Chris Howard and I'm one of the hosts for the Anywhere Club community English speaking channels. I'm delighted today be, to be joined by Alexi and we're going to be having a great conversation around product mindset, engineering practices and lots more content, so keep listening. First, you might be wondering, what is the Anywhere Club? Well, we're a global community of IT professionals helping with your career progression, education, and even relocation. We're available on Discord and our Anywhere Club community website, and there's lots of interaction with thousands of members engaging daily in exciting conversation around your IT career. So without further ado, let's introduce Alexi, hear a little bit about himself before we jump into the main content of today. Alexi, over to you. Shortly, yeah, about me. I'm, I'm doing product ma managers management for four years, and I'm in IT for nine years. So my first five years was as a, a QA engineer. It was, honestly, it was like a bit um, uh, mixed with other stuff like i was doing a little bit po a little bit a little bit scrum master and um, but i always was interested in some product stuff so uh, like uh, almost for four years i'm doing purely product management it's it's not like purely to be honest because sometimes depends on the project you do different stuff like for me product manager is a person like really uh, like T-shaped, or I don't know how, how do I I don't know how to say it right. By the way, I just wanted to to share that this is my first time in my life I'm taking part on the podcast in English. So in case I'm saying something wrong or or, or I'm thinking too too long, it's just because I'm like I'm not a native speaker at all. So I'm sorry for that, guys. But you're doing great. It's, it sounds perfect to me. <laughs> Maybe it's something I was you know it was written somewhere. That's why. <laughs> okay. And uh, by the way, I'm the I'm the host of the Ukrainian Anywhere Club uh, YouTube channel. So if you know Ukrainian or you would like to read uh, auto-generated uh, uh, subtitles, you can go to our Ukrainian channel and check out what we have over there as well. Definitely. And I don't think, unfortunately, you'll be seeing me on the Ukrainian channel anytime soon. So I'm just maintaining <laughs> the English, unfortunately, Alexi. We, we can try to make English serious somehow. I think it's, it will be interesting as well. Excellent. Well, cheers for telling us a little bit about yourself. So why don't we jump straight in uh, for those of, uh, those of uh, the individuals listening who perhaps might be the first time they're hearing about product management. What is product management, the product mindset? Just, just go for it. Tell us a little bit more. Let's let's focus on product mindset because product management is really great complex topic with a lot of uh, different like uh, variables and when a lot of things to talk about. So what is the product mindset? I'm and uh, like just to be clear, I'm not a person who somewhere read what is product mindset. This is something I just like. I'm talking from my gut, so I don't know how to say it right. I like just my gut feelings. Yeah, what what I just found out in my in my experience, and what do I think about what what are people saying when is product mindset for the developer or QA or etc. Like some person who is not making any um, business stuff, making more technical things. What I, what I'm thinking about that. So for me, product mindset. This is something when engineer understands the um, pain of the user and needs of the user so this this is someone who really who asks a lot of why why we do that and then and then what and why and why this is important and why we want to change it and what and sometimes you hate this guy sometimes like shut up and do this do this story come on like stop asking me those stupid questions but uh, more often it's really really important and valuable because in my practice i found out I think with such people, you can do everything cheaper. In by cheaper, I mean less effort, right? Is it is it right to say cheaper when you like you put less effort, right? And uh, I think with with such engineers, at least ten, maybe twenty percent of the work is just cancelled, or, or like you just decide not to do that. 
because it's useless. You you do it another way. You f- just find out the other way, and and with such understanding on the ho- all levels of the engineering, when everyone understands what is the purpose behind the the idea or behind the the story. Uh, you just can sp- skip some of the stuff or you can change other feature and you just fulfill this pain or this this need in other feature and it costs like tiny stuff i mean like i don't know half a day it's not like two months of development you can make it really simple fast and you can just just can do it or or even often sometimes we come that like um the business comes to you by business i mean any type of the stakeholder users business that you're working for etc and they come and they said like we want this feature like i don't know um changing something on the ui let's go something really simple and uh, you can do okay okay let's do it i'm like like a product like a project manager yeah okay you want it you want that feature okay let's do it and you go to the developer and he said like okay um how often because because this costs two two weeks how often would you like to do that and then you go back and then you found out like uh you they need that once a year once in two years and they will spend on that with our i don't know some support type or maybe developer will sit down and spend maybe two days on that but we don't need to spend two months on that and two months is like 40 working days and we know that this change needs only two days per year so if we do this development we will invest like we will have this return of investment in 10 years and this is a great possibility that this will change and there will not be such need in one year because we know we we're living in a really um changing environment right everything changes really often um so then you just skip it if everyone's smart enough in all the levels and the business is smart enough because sometimes business is like i want that please do this and then we're like okay okay your pain we we do something for two months because you want it there is no reason behind it but you want it okay let's make it but it, when we have everyone is really like um i don't know how to say it right i'm I'm feeling like with I don't have what words and i can be mean in this conversation but i'm sorry guys we like uh i think ukrainians often are really straightforward people at least i heard that a lot from the our american colleagues or or indian colleagues like man you're too too straightforward be more more polite please so i'm sorry if not, if i'm not polite enough in my wordings but uh, if everyone's smart enough then then you really make it cheap fast most of the things not always but uh and and i'm sure that this stuff is happening thanks to the product mindset of the engineering team when people understand all levels of the needs and pains and what should be done at the end and what is the purpose behind of what we are making yeah <clears throat> I mean, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. And, and I, I suppose from any business perspective, having individuals who are focused on the end user, the product, as opposed to simply a list of tasks to complete must be must be a good thing. I mean, we're about building better products for, for the end user versus, like you say, just delivering things for the sake of it. But I suppose one of the questions that comes to me straight away is many of the people listening will be engineers. Is this therefore about simply not logging in in the morning and looking at your backlog of tasks, but instead taking a step back and looking at actually what you're being asked to to build and then making recommendations? Does that not all sound a little bit too blue sky aspirational? Do you think engineers are doing this or certainly sounds like they should be doing this? Um, I think this is wrong process when engineer is looking on a backlog that already should be done and then he should go for go like higher on a higher level and make questions and then like fight. This is I think this is wrong way. We are not talking about the person who should be tough. We're talking about the person who uh, having the product mindset doesn't mean that you are a tough guy who can fight the business and like uh, like what what and he, he shouldn't ask the question why you gave me that like if someone already gave him the the backlog with those features without having the proper conversation because i i think that if it's like the level of the idea then okay 
yeah, Th then it's okay. If you have already the backlog, which is already groomed, but when you have everything estimated already, you had this conversation on grooming for some reason, or it has an estimation not on the grooming by someone else, I don't know, some, uh, like it sometimes happens, yeah? You have like team lead or like architecture guy who make the estimations just from his head, and then you just should make it. Then it's about the... Um, the culture and the structure and the, the processes inside the team. It's not about the developer himself. So this is more like you, like um, I'm talking more about when we have really free environment in our team or in company, it depends on like where you are, how do you feel yourself? You're in the team or you're like in the company, right? By company, I mean like a lot of teams and you have some, the way of the communication, etc. So I don't think that you can have really cool engineer who understands the business when you put him in a wrong environment when business doesn't care about it because this is not only like about the one person right it's a, it should be some fit the way you just said it i mean the, like the developer should come see the backlog and then ask the questions and look higher i I, I think this is the wrong approach. I, I don't like. I don't want such to be such guy in such situation. I would say it in in that way. So this is a complex stuff. You like. So we are trying to narrow it down, but at the same time, it's not like the beautiful life with. Uh, why well, do you say the, like this unicorns? Yeah, like unicorns. Everyone is happy. Blah blah. It's not like <laughs> because. Um, uh, I think this is uh, to make it work. You should you, like it. It should work on all the levels, right? And we're talking about just what is product mindset for the engineer. So I think we now need to decide where we want to go. Is it a product mindset, or uh, how we can make the the team to be uh, product oriented, be more? Um, I don't know. Well, have like bringing more value, etc. So that that's why i don't know is it makes sense absolutely it makes perfect sense so i think let's not go down that route but what you're saying is ultimately we should be going further up the food chain in terms of thinking about product way of working and not simply receiving a piece of requirements or work to, to deliver as an engineer but actually being privy or part of those conversations much much earlier on in the conversation so definitely makes sense what well, what I did want to pick up then is, of course, the Anywhere Club is all about skills and helping IT professionals build their careers. There's no doubt lots of engineers listening then thinking about this product mindset. So some people might say engineers uh, may be very creative or might not be very creative, um, whereas product managers are all about passion for the user and accessibility and inclusion. Are there some skills that are inherently what engineers have that you think translate really, really well to this product mindset? It's really hard for me to say it in that way because I think it's not more about the skills. I think it's more about some mindset and by mindset I mean some, um, I don't know how to say it, maybe understanding of life or like what person is actually thinking about like how do they live something like that I, I don't know how to say it right. I mean like there are some guys who just doesn't care a lot. They just say I want um money it's it's okay to, to want more i want money as well it's it's good but when the person thinks in the way like it's only money for me just give me what numbers i should receive in my code and which numbers should be out output at the end so give me the input tell me the output i will do the the program so if the person like thinks in the coder perspective like this is something that you actually can do now with chat gpt like I'm, I'm 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 not a developer, but I, like I made the the program a few weeks ago. I just write to him, man. I need to do something. Make it in Python, and he just gave me, and it worked. And it, but it was really simple. And then I think the coders they will be replaced almost with uh, GPT. Not all of them, but I think I don't know some percentage, some part. The people who just don't really care much about the complexity of what's going on here so they just want simple stuff they just basically they they would like to work in the factory when they should stay in one spot and just put the i don't know how to say it when you put it like and you like just screw it or something yeah so you do something like 
almost same every day. So I think there is such people. I I just want to be clear. I don't think that people just black and white or something. Yeah, right. But there is more guys who just do like coding and thinking like coders. And this is not what uh, I'm as a, as a, I don't know, managing person would like to look for because it will be for me to complicate it will be complicated to me to work with such person because when he will show me the feature he he like he will be silent in all the meetings he just will say it's cost three story points and that's all and then on the demo he will show me what's happening and i will say like would you like like do you like how it works actually and he will like i don't know let's ask the designer and i will be like um Okay, <laughs> let's ask the designer. But I want you to be the like because you are the person and you're making it for other people. They are not designers; they're just people like you. They will use it. So, would you like to use it? Do you like the way it actually works? Like it's loading or I don't know, switching somewhere. Like, do you actually like it by yourself? And he like, no, I like this look like shit. I would like to have some, I don't know, um, a line, and I put the code in there, and then I get the an answer. It, it will be more simpler for me. So this is like the the guy that uh, it's f- like I, I will put him then in i don't know support or just some team which is working with a really old code i'm not saying that we don't need those guys at all yeah but in the perspective of this product mindset stuff at the same time i'm actually sure like i'm when i'm when when talk people from the uh, not, not from it i'm always saying that developers is the artists I'm I'm totally sure it, they just they just painting everything with numbers, but actually they are artists because they need to find a solution. But there are sometimes artists who doesn't care much, who just like put the lines and they don't care. There's the artists who would like to make this solution happen, and um, I don't think that you can study this or like when you can go and study the product mindset. I'm just I'm thinking this is like, like the way you think. Like when I'm opening door somewhere or I'm sitting in some car, I'm all, I'm often thinking like wow, this is a great engineering idea. Even when I'm in a like I'm, I'm not loving only iPhones, I don't know, because I don't have an iPhone by the way. But um when I'm sitting in some really cheap car, I'm I'm so how to say it right like you are like wow what what's the, the right English word for that I feel like I'm like this is awesome you guys needed to make a car for 7k euros this is like nothing for the car right but you did it and it worked it's and it's it has a lot of space inside so and it's running actually it's not taking a lot of petrol it's useful in all the stuff yeah there, it's there's no fancy things there is no fancy screens etc but this is cheap and it's working and this is great engineering uh, decision for the people who needed spacey car for less money so i'm like i, I feel myself always like wow and uh, and at the same time for the time for expensive stuff because i'm thinking about the price as well about some time um, effort etc it's not only cool things and not cool things it's about some solutions based on the um problem that those solutions trying to fix and there's developers who are thinking in this same way and i think this is more about like um some mindset of to be interested in the outside world and i think this is one you can say one word in english for that but i just can't remember it uh, when you just interested in everything, how curiosity, yeah, right, yeah. So, so, so you just need to be curious about the the stuff which is happening around you and at your work. So I, I'm not thinking, and this is maybe this is the main issue with the product mindset, because uh, if you want to know Python, you just and you are like Java developer, you just I don't know, you just find out how it works. And you just find out the like what wordings are there, and you just become the Python engineer. You try, you you try more, and then you have it. And this is like tech skill, right? Hard skill. And I think this is the good stuff about the hard skills. You can just get them. The problem with soft skills, you cannot just get them. You need a lot of practice, and there is no courses for that. 
you need to go to psychotherapy or something, or you just try to find out about yourself. What do you think? What do you feel? You're trying. To, yeah, yeah, you're trying as well. You need practice, as with the Python, but uh, there is less ways to understand it because it's like high level not clear stuff and this i think the same with the product mindset this is something you just need to like um we call it not the i don't know how to say it when you look on something a lot and then you're trying to see it like uh, like about the style i don't know this is simple stuff you want to be stylish right so you just take some um uh some app where there's a lot of pictures i don't know instagram you 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 subscribe into the people that you like style of them and you just watch a lot of the pictures and then your mind trying to understand those styles and then you go to the shop and then you find out uh how you want to look yeah you you can you can order some person who can do that but when in some reason like uh, like stylist person right but when this person is out you cannot put the right clothes on you 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 will forget and you will put some t-shirt which is not fit so it's better to to develop those uh, those um understanding mindset or i know how to say it right is it because i i wouldn't call it uh, the ability about yourself and i mean it's not about the um, something that you can just learn and that's all you need always to to be in those in that environment so you need to like to have it around you. And it's the same with the product mindset. This is really hard to understand. This is hard to explain. But when you see these people, you just understand this is the right guy. And I think I, I think if the like developers who are listening to us, engineers, they I think some of them doesn't understand what we're talking about. And some of them are coders, some of them are engineers. But by, by engineer, I mean the guy with the product mindset, coders, person who doesn't care a lot. So um, for them to understand what they are and what they can do, I would say that if you have curiosity, if you are always interested about more than you do, then you may be the, the right guy and you go in the right direction. If you don't really care much, you see everything really straightforward and only near you, like then maybe you're a coder. Maybe. I'm, I'm not the judging person here. Definitely. What, what I'm thinking, though, is that let's imagine I'm an engineer, and please don't think about that too much. Uh, I'm certainly not. Um, how how does an engineer then personally have this mindset, this living and breathing, I think is what you're getting at, around wanting to build an engineer the very best solution versus being conscious that they're being paid and salaried to deliver projects kind of on time and on budget? How they don't want to be the person every day saying oh but we shouldn't build it this way or, or we should build it this way or it's going to take too long or it's not going to take too long we could make it bigger small how do they balance that that must be crazy to, to have to try and think about that for every single feature of the product and i think this is depends on the company you're working for or the product you're building because when it's a lot of those stuff because now i'm working in a project when there there's a lot of such things that like this should be done because business really understands we need that we need some rule over there we need some logic over there and this is really straightforward this is not about like yeah we're asking what your pain you're trying to fix etc but at the end we understand that this is a capability that we should to deliver and then you just like okay uh but this is really hard and i don't really know how to fix it this balance about the you know how we started to, to call it sexy stuff this is in my head actually because i'm sometimes i'm a coder as well like i'm the product manager but sometimes i just do coding because there is some cool guy really like head of stakeholders i don't know god coming to me and he like i need that and he needs something that my team will be um like busy for three months and I understand that he really needs it, and, but it's not interesting. It's 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 not fun, and doesn't need a lot of product mindset. To understand this is something that should be done. Yeah, we can play a little inside, and we can make it cheaper and more performance, and I don't know, better, etc. But it's not like cool stuff. And then I need to balance as well. I'm trying to to see that some useful feature, which will be sexy as well. <laughs> 
when when my mind is like wow i want to do that this is cool and uh, yeah and this is always this is the paradox at the same time if you have this guy with the product mindset but you don't have the sexy stuff he will leave if you have the coder who would like to develop the product mindset uh like in your team but you don't have the sexy stuff he will not he will be the coder and then Come on, don't say that you have coders in your team because this is what you actually need. So this is uh, this is the the really tough question. But when the person like really struggles uh, that he doesn't have this like this fun to be the to use in his product mindset, right? I think this is about environment. You just maybe try to change it, maybe not like absolutely change it. I don't know the way. Maybe just I don't know. Find the part time job. Um, like do something in some startup where everything is crazy and you just see the other side because sometimes it's too fun too sexy it's just too crazy <laughs> i worked in such a startup this is this is not cool as well when you have this crazy stuff every day and you are you need to like to be product or you will die but it's it's just too much so this is really complicated thing so i think it's more about the person to understand what is what is the way and what is the environment he would like to be uh yeah and it's not like you're always asking why why what the purpose because sometimes it's really straightforward you just see like yeah like yeah we need that and that's all makes sense so so you've heard it there so startups call every day is not necessarily always the best thing sometimes it's just nice to be a coder for a day in a week so i i get it i get it so so can I ask a, a question for my own benefit, perhaps controversial? If let's imagine you've got the dream team and all of your engineers have got the product mindset, and maybe this is my naivety or ignorance. What's the purpose of the product manager then in, in a team where that product mindset permeates everyone? What, why do we have a product manager as well? I think because someone needs to do this products like stage when you need to figure out the numbers you need to figure out the needs more you need to ask for this pain more you need to talk about with to talk you need to talk with like i don't know 100 users you need to do the interviews and if the developers will do all that stuff then there is no ability to work but i think that when you have this like perfect team as you said i think then we can have less business analysis person or we can have less product managers because uh when we have i I had this conversation by the way when on some of the interviews two years ago when i was searching looking for a job uh the guy asked me like what is the purpose of the product owner and i said if we have a perfect team if you have really get cool uh culture inside and everyone is feel um free and understand the purpose what's going on then product owner is not needed much it's more about the um defining the uh like backlog what is more important what is less uh like talking with stakeholders so this is any like it's more the person who like doing a lot of the uh delivery management stuff or project management things when he's just trying to hold all the shit outside the team and understands what's going on what they want people outside and just try to send the the cleared information i don't know how to say it right yeah when you clear something like uh, from the uh from uh useless uh, stuff so um yeah i think that we will need less develop less uh in such team we will have we will need less developers as well we will we will need less qa engineers as well we will need less ba business analysis as well and uh, we will not need a lot of the product managers because it's, it's often not the one person sometimes it's just a lot of people right they do a lot of different stuff so but i think in such team we will just need less because it's they can just see the purpose they can uh throw away a waste they have nice communication and then that it's not only the product mindset. I think we're talking when when we're talking about the perfect team, it's about the growing ups. You know, when when people can 
uh, ecologically, I don't know how to, is it right to say it in English, like we, we, we call it ecological communication. When you just, you can tell me, you can be honest with me. You can say like, hey, Alexei, this is bullshit. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for thanks for sharing that, or I I'm I, or I'm saying no, man, I love that, and that's why. And we have this conversation, and you are free to to discuss, and I'm free, and I'm happy that you do that. And we have this, the way of like um, throwing throwing away bullshit and doing some really uh, useful things. So in such environment, when everyone is growing up, and I think it's one of the, the hardest question, like how do you find out the, uh, the, the right person, like when person is emotionally uh, grown up, or I don't know how to say it right, like when you, when you find the right adult, because we have a lot of kids. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, to be kids, it's cool. To be kid is, is really cool stuff. I like that. I like to be the kid. Uh, but sometimes like, yeah, you need the growing up conversation to fix something or and to understand something. So this is always the balance, and I think this is really a hard thing to to understand. This is because now I hear a lot that the main problem, whatever you do, even you do in create chat GPT or sending rockets into the into the Mars, you always about stuffing, like about recruitment. This is the main issue, finding the right people. This is so <laughs> this is so, so complicated. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm feeling that I'm going somewhere, but yeah. No, I mean it. It sounds like product-minded engineers are going to take over the world. So, bad news to any BAs, QAs listening. So, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the message you're saying, but definitely, I, I can see the value in. And before we kind of wrap up on this topic, I just wanted to ask one more question, because when you were talking then, you were talking a little bit around that kind of mature way of thinking, having a kind of adult conversation, but also understanding the priorities and, and still needing that product owner role to kind of protect the development team, if you like, the engineering team. So another p potentially controversial question, but I'd love to get your view is, why might you therefore need a product owner and a scrum master on an engineering team? What, what, what does that intersection look like? I'm the wrong guy to ask this question because I never understood the purpose of the scrum master. I'm, I'm just, I'm just the wrong guy. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, really, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I was so interested in scrum for some for some point of my life. Like five years ago, I started to be so much in it. I'm, I'm really interested in it. I was in some uh, conferences about that. I was studying coaching. Then I went to the psychology. And now this is my hobby, actually, the psychology. And I'm studying psychology right now. I love it very much. And I'm using it a lot at, at my work. But I never understood the pure Scrum Master role, to be honest. Uh, because uh, the problem of the Scrum, actually, it's not written over there, but this, you should read it and in the first line. Th they say you need to find the uh, good engineers that can do different work. I don't remember. that There's something like that. It's not written, find the growing up people. <laughs> Because it's like, it's like clear. Like everyone understands that you need the mature people, right? Oh, I found man. I I I remember the word mature. Cool. So, but it's not written anywhere. But this is so important to find the mature people. And when you have mature people and you have a nice um, uh, culture inside the team then I don't need that you need Scrum Master a lot. Maybe some guy across the company, but at the same time, this is like the uh, um, responsibility from my perspective. This is responsibility of the team lead or PO, depends on how, because, you know, uh, roles are mixed often. It depends on the person who feel accountable for the team to create the culture where people feel protected and people are um, understand clearly what's going on. So they know what is the input and what is the output. When they knew all that stuff, they start doing magic, honestly. Like from my um, 
perspective when you are clear with your team and then i I love to say such things your decision my responsibility like like because you know better what to do like you are a developer you know better right i don't know how to make it better i told you what the customer wants we discussed with you what is the best decision and then do it because i don't know if for some reason we screwed up then it's my responsibility i'm taking it no worries because i knew like i know that you made the best decision at the moment you were making this decision i i know that you are um that you were trying to do it best and when i say this stuff when i share this i don't know uh mindset to the people to the team then they feel protected then they feel um uh, um transparent yeah they 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 understand the transparency what's going on then they just do their job and this is great when they are mature smart and and in that case we don't need much like product mindset a little bit like i don't know 20 percent of the product mindset not not all of it <laughs> then then you see the magic so the, the, that's why i cannot answer your question i think we need some scrum master to explain not 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 me Definitely. I mean, I can see a video coming up, you versus a scrum master. I mean, that, that would be, that would be quite a watch, wouldn't it? So <laughs> I think we're coming up to time, Alexi. So at the beginning of this video, we spoke about your expertise and insight into how engineers can adopt the product mindset, the value that provides to them as individuals, but also the value that provides to teams and how you can further your IT career by taking that approach. And, and that's no doubt been incredibly useful to anyone listening who's perhaps on a similar journey. I'll wrap up here. Uh, I'll say a massive thank you to you for joining us. I'll say a thank you, of course, to everyone listening. Uh, This has been a video as part of the uh, Anywhere Club interview series. If you aren't engaging with us already on socials, then all of the links to our channels are just down below in the description. Please reach out to us via Discord as well. We'd love to see you online in the community. And if you liked what you heard, if you want to hear more, like, comment, subscribe and share. And we'll look forward to speaking to you in our next video series uh, with the Anywhere Club. But it's been a real pleasure to have you join us today, Alexi. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure and a great experience.